Hello everyone, welcome to Nesso Academy. In this lecture, we will understand friend non-member functions. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. There is only one topic and the name of the topic is friend non-member functions. Let's now properly understand what are friend non-member functions. In order to understand what are friend non-member functions, and their usefulness, let's take one simple example program. Let's say we have this class box with these private members length and breadth. Apart from this, we also have this public member function set data that allows us to set length and breadth of a box with the help of L and B parameters. So with the help of this class, we would be able to create a box with a specified length and breadth. Now here is the main function and inside this main function I have defined the object b1 of class box. Now through this object we can access the set data function because this is the public member function. We can access this member function outside this class through the object of this class. Here with the help of this object b1 I am trying to access the set data function and through this function I am setting the length and breadth of the box. Length is 100 and breadth is 20. This is what I am doing here. Now, here I am calculating the area of the box. Here I am accessing length and breadth properties of this class and that too with the help of the object b1. I am multiplying them and I am storing the result in the area variable. So here I am calculating the area of the box. And after this, I am simply printing the area with the help of stdcout statement. Now, what do you think what happens when we execute this program? It seems like we will get the area on the screen, that is 2000, because 100 times 20 is 2000. But that's not true. We will get error from the compiler. Now, why are we getting error from the compiler? That's the question. Think about it. Here we are accessing length and breadth properties of this class through the object b1. But that is not possible because these are private members. This is what I have mentioned here. Length and breadth are private to the box class and therefore they are not accessible inside the main function. These are private members of this class and therefore they are only accessible within this class. They are not accessible outside this class and that too within the main function. But here, through the b1 object, we are trying to access these properties and that is why we are getting error from the compiler. I hope this is clear to you. So this is the problem. Now, let's say, instead of multiplying length and breadth over here, we multiply them within a non-member function. So let's define a non-member function and let's calculate the area of the box within that function. Here is the non-member function, calculate area. This is the non-member function because this function is not defined within this class. Also, there is no declaration of this function available within the class. Therefore, this is the non-member function. Also, this function can accept the object of the class box. Now, through this object, we can access length and breadth and we can multiply them. And eventually, we can return this value to the caller. Here, in place of b1.length times b1.breadth, we need to call this function calculate area. And here, we are passing b1 as the object. This means b dot length must be replaced by 100 and b dot breadth must be replaced by 20. So we will get 2000 as the result. But here we are accessing length and breadth properties within this function, which is a non member function. And therefore, this function cannot access these properties of this class. If this is the member function, then it would be able to access these properties. But this is the non-member function. Hence, through the object of this class, we cannot access these properties inside this function 
and therefore again we will get error from the compiler. This is exactly what I have mentioned here. Length and breadth are private to the box class and therefore not accessible inside a non-member function. Calculate area is the non-member function. It cannot access these private members. Now let's say somehow we want to access these private members within this class. We can do this indirectly with the help of member functions of this class. We need to define member functions like these. Here we have get length function and get breadth function. As the name suggests, get length function allows us to get the length of this class. Here you can observe that this function will return the length to us and this get breadth function will give us the breadth. Now in place of b dot length, we can write b dot get length. And in place of b dot breadth, we can write b dot get breadth. This is because these are public member functions. We can access these member functions with the help of the object of this class. And indirectly, we would be able to access the private members as well. Because these member functions can access length and breadth properties. And therefore, we would be able to indirectly access these properties within this function. Here we need to replace b.length by b.getLength and b.breadth by b.getBreadth. This is what we will get. Now when we execute this program, we will get the output as expected, which is 2000. Now understand why are we getting this output? This is because to the calculate area function, we have passed the object B1. The copy of this object will be passed to the object B. This means now this get length function would be able to access the length which is provided through set data, which is 100. And this length will be returned. So here we will receive 100. In the same way, we will receive 20 here because the breadth is set by B1 as 20. So here we will get 20. I hope this is clear to you. So eventually we are getting this output which is 2000. Now we are getting the output as expected. Inside the non-member function, indirectly we have accessed the private members of this class. But there is one problem. If you observe carefully, these are public member functions and therefore they are accessible to all the functions of this program. We just need to create the object of this class and through that object we would be able to call these functions. So we can say that these private members are now accessible indirectly to all the functions of this program. This is the behavior that we may not want. It might be the case that we want that the calculate area function should be able to access length and breadth properties and no other function would be able to access these properties directly or indirectly. If that is what we want, then these functions are not at all useful. Because through these functions, we would be able to access these properties indirectly. So here, private data is now exposed to everyone because of these functions. But this is something that we may not want. We only want that these properties should be accessible within this function. And for this purpose, we have something in C++, which is called the friend non-member function. We can define this non-member function as friend non-member function. Now, what is the meaning of friend non-member function? Let's first try to understand this. A friend non-member function is a function that has special rights to access private and protected data members. So, a friend non-member function has the capability to access private and even protected members of a specific class. We do not know anything about protected members at this moment. Later, when we understand inheritance, we will get to know about it. 
But for now, just understand that friend non-member function can access private and protected members of a specific class. That is why it is called a friend function. It is friend of a specific class and hence it would be able to access private and protected members of that class. So, if we want a specific function to be able to access private and protected members of a specific class, and if we want that no other function would be able to access those private and protected members, then we need to define that function as friend function of that class. Now, let's take the same example to properly understand friend non-member function. Here we are considering the same example. We do not want these functions because we know that with the help of these functions, any function would be able to access these properties. In place of these two functions, we need to write this declaration. Here I have specified the keyword friend. And after this, I have declared this function calculate area. This is what you can observe. Now, this function calculate area is called the friend function of this class because of this declaration. This is the syntax we need to follow in order to create a friend non member function. Understand that this is the non member function, but this function has special rights to access private and protected members of this class box. This means in place of b.getLength, we can write b.length and in place of b.getBreadth, we can write b.breadth. Now let's replace these two. We will get b.length times b.breadth. This is perfectly valid and we will get the output as expected, which is 2000. I hope now it is completely clear to you what is a friend non-member function. A friend non-member function is a special type of function which can access private and protected members of a specific class. I hope this is clear to you. This is the non-member function still it can access private and protected members of the class. Now you might be thinking why we need to do all this work when we can simply define this function as the member function of this class. This is just a simple example. Let's consider a scenario. Let's say we have multiple classes and there are multiple private members of those classes. Now, let us assume that we need to define a function that would be able to access private members of all the classes. Now, if that is the requirement, then we cannot create a member function of a specific class because that member function would be able to access private and protected members of that class only, where it is defined. If we define a non member function, and if we define it as friend of all the classes, then that non-member function would be able to access private and protected members of all the classes. This is the usefulness of friend non-member functions. Whenever we need a function that would be able to access private and protected members of multiple classes, then we define that non-member function as friend of those classes. I hope this concept is completely clear to you. So with this we have understood friend non-member functions completely and this means we are done with this topic and we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.